Beloved, we have the best job in the world. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We are his witness. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. Beloved, it is our duty not only to believe in Christ, but to profess that faith and to suffer for him if necessary when we are called to it, as well as serving him in the faith. Confession of Christ by us in the preaching of the gospel knows no gender exclusion. Male and female are appointed by God for this ministry. We ought openly and boldly acknowledge and declare that Christ is truly and properly God the eternal Son of God, the only mediator between God and men, the Savior and Redeemer of lost sinners. We must focus on Him whose shed blood alone is the payment for forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. For it is by only Him in whose righteousness we sinners can be justified before God, and by whose sacrifice and satisfaction for the payment of sin, only sin is expiated, is removed from our column. We believe that he died for us and took our place from judgment, that he rose again for our justification, that he ascended to heaven for us, that he is set down at the right hand of God and ever lives to make intercession for us daily for our sins and will come again and judge both the quick and the dead. Such a free and open confession of Christ ought to be made by all of us before the world. In all areas and all fields, God makes available, right here. And in spite of all the rage and opposition of both earth and hell, our faithful service shall not fail of being taken notice of by Christ, for he himself has said, Him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven, and speak in the praise and commendation of our works and labors which have been performed through the gifts, the grace, and strength which he has communicated to us by the Holy Spirit. Beloved, it is Jesus who, as our advocate, our love, before our Father, who will introduce our faithful works into his presence, recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life, to be honored, blessed, and glorified above. We know that God 
will bless those who serve his glory. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. Repentance means a change of mind or heart. This conviction comes from God the Spirit, and what follows is salvation by grace through faith, as the convicted sinner acknowledges Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, according to the gospel of grace. This has nothing to do with works. Works in faith follow salvation if one is truly saved. Beloved, God in his sovereign grace has chosen us to save and has set his love our way. We are picked out of the stream of mankind who are helpless and on their way to hell and this is the message we have to give them that Jesus and only him can remove that judgment that is already upon all sinners heads and who without Christ are bound eventually after his judgment seat on their sins to be forever in the lake of fire. Yes, beloved, in the lake of fire there is a place for the lost that is eternal and eternally they will be in torment. Why did God bestow his sovereign grace on believers? Not because we deserve salvation, but to demonstrate the riches of his glory. The truth is that God does not violate our wills by choosing us and redeeming us, for we are lost and cannot cross over from darkness into his light. But beloved, rather think of this, he changes our hearts so that our wills will choose him. We love him because he first loved us. And we did not choose him, but he chose us. Therefore, our only proper response is, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing right now in heavenly places in Christ. Beloved, Joshua, on his deathbed, challenged the people of Israel as to who they were going to serve. Would they serve the gods that they were serving and continue to do that, the phony gods among them? Or would they serve the Lord? And Jesus has asked us this same question and we answer that we will serve the Lord who died for us, who did nothing to deserve such blessings and cannot do now without his fullness of the Holy Spirit in us so that we can serve his honor and his glory until our last breath in this life. May God richly bless this message 